اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبحانک لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انک انت العلیم الحکیم ففهمنا سلیمان و کلنا تینا حکم و علم رب شرح لی صدری و یسل لی امری و احلل اقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم سبحانک لما وحنا نیک علم لا تنسنی ولا تنسنی الحمد للہ افضل الحمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسائر النبي والصالحين وسلم الموفقني وحدني وسدني وسددني وجمالي بين الصواب والثواب وعذني من الخط والهنمان آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of Q and A where surprisingly as it says on the tin questions and answers if you do wish to call in to pose your question the number is Bradford or one two seven four Two one four two double nine. That's Bradford O one two seven four two one four two double nine. So Jazak Mahir for joining me. I'm gonna take a, a question that I was asked uh, just recently in fact and we're looking into this in more detail. And uh, and then I'll go through some of the questions that I received uh, uh, through our Istifta, Yani through our Darul Ifta here in Bradford, the Markazul Ifta wal Qadha. Uh, which works closely with also the uh, Darul Ifta of Wifaqul Ulama. Now, Nawafil. Okay, there's a question about when should the Nawafil be prayed, what Nawafil are there. You know, there's some sort of confusion. Uh, comes to light particularly uh, during the month of Ramadan, which reminds me to take a sip of this coffee. Bismillah. So, in the month of Ramadan, Many questions come up about when uh, should people pray Nawafil, what time is the Nawafil time, um, what is the name of, or names of the Nawafil. We're kind of a little bit more worship conscious during the month of Ramadan. So let's look at it from, as we sort of look at it from there, maybe the Indian kind of subcontinent way. We have what we call Ishraq. And Ishraq Salah is prayed after sunrise. So once we pray the two rakats fard of fajr, we cannot pray anything after that. So we cannot pray any uh, qadha salah. We cannot pray any nafal salah. Obviously, there is no other fard salah. We have to wait till sunrise. Now, as Hanafis, we pray our fajr late. Late in the sense we pray near the end time. Because according to us, our understanding, or rather Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, and his students' understanding is, that one should lighten and brighten the Fajr. And the time when we lighten and brighten the Fajr is near sunrise as the sky gets brighter. Whereas the other Madahib uh, prefer the early start. So they would look at praying Fajr near the beginning time. And therefore, because they would say, Ghalas, yani darken the Fajr time or keep the Fajr, pray the Fajr when it is still dark. And the narrations they discuss mention the people going home and still not be able to recognize each other because of how dark it was. So these are the discussions that we have with regards to Fajr. So let's just take the Hanafi position. You're waiting in the masjid. Those of us, uh, those who are performing Aitikaf or those who stay in the masjid during the month of Ramadan or even outside the month of Ramadan, pray the Fajr far and now they're waiting for sunrise. So sunrise takes place wherever it is, half five, 5.45, I'm not sure what time sunrise is. And once sunrise takes place, then approximately, and this is where the big discussion is taking place because the hadith mentions a rumh, yani a spear, uh, and then trying to equate what that spear relates to in with regards to the sun's movements. Now we know that there are obviously 24 hours in a day and in the 24 hours in a day, there's that, you know, what's that? 24 times 60. So for those of you who aren't working out, I'll work out for you. So 24 times 60, duh, 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 there we are. 24 times 60, oops, 24 times 60, that's four, 1,440 minutes, okay? Divide that by 360. Uh, why divide it by 360? Because 360 is the circumference as the earth or the sun is traveling around, so it's 360 degrees from its starting point to its end point. So if there are 1,440 minutes in a day, 
and the sun will end up being in the same place after a full day. So after the passing of 24 hours, if the sun starts here, I appreciate it's the earth going around the sun, but for our argument, let's just look at it from the perspective of the earth. So the, earth, the sun will go around the earth, 12 hours it's down here, 18 hours it's there, and then 24 hours has gone past, it's back there. So we have midnight, another 24 hours later, we're back to midnight. Six in the morning, another 24 hours later, we're back to six in the morning. High noon, another 24 hours, we're back to noon again. So the sun's position ends up being exactly the same 24 hours later. So that's where we get 1,440 minutes. Because what we do is we take 24 hours, multiply that by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and that gives us 1,440 minutes. Then what we have is the circumference, and the circumference obviously is 360 degrees. So we do 1,440 divided by 360. That tells us that there are four minutes per degree. Okay, that's why when we mention, when we determine Zawal, we work out what high noon is, and Zawal is one degree after that, which means four minutes after that. Okay, and that's why you find that when we have noon, we have about a five, ten minute period in which we don't pray. And that's what we call noon. And we're similar when we have sunrise and sunset, similar situations there. Uh, but we're not going to talk about those for now. So four minutes per degree, and it has been reported by modern astronomers that the rumh, the spear, equates to about 4.5 uh, minutes. Okay, 4.5 minutes. Uh, was it 4.5? Yeah, 4.5 minutes. Okay, and that's how it works it out. And from there, sorry, 4.5 degrees, my apologies. Okay, so 4.5 degrees. So 4.5 degrees multiplied by whatever you decide to multiply by, let's say four, then that works out to be around 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so 4.5 times 20, uh, not times 20, why did I just do that for? 4.5 times four minutes is 18 minutes. So 18 minutes after sunrise should be the, what we call Ishraq. Okay, now Ishraq, normally we pray, you know, in two rakats uh, units, uh, four rakats we will pray. Uh, that would be the normal period. And then we have something called Chasht, okay. Now these names are Persian names uh, and they've been uh, Urdufied, if that's the right word for it. And uh, Chasht would sit halfway in between sunrise and noon. So if sunrise is say six, I'm just making it easy for myself, and noon is say 12, then that would be around nine, okay, nine in the morning. Whereas if, you know, sunrise is six and uh, noon is one, then that would be 9.30. And if sunrise is later, then obviously it pushes it further along. So around nine, 10 o'clock in the morning is when that would be what we call chash salah. Now, when we look in the hadith and we see that there doesn't seem to be two prayers there, but in fact, it seems to be that there's only one prayer there, which is called Salatul Duha, which is the Arabic uh, phrase for it. And it means forenoon prayer, yani before the noon. And therefore, what we, when we try to kind of understand all these ahadith, what we find is that there is, seems to be a nafal prayer after sunrise before noon, but there seems to be some level of flexibility of when you can pray it. Where the, you know, you cannot pray it 15 minutes or 20 minutes before the sun has risen. So there's got to be a minimum of 20 minutes waiting. Uh, so that's got to be the, the starting point. It's about 20 minutes after the sun has risen, up to uh, just before noon. So maybe another 15, 20 minutes on that side. Whereas all that time that remains in the middle now, there's some level of flexibility as to when that person can pray this nafal prayer. So as I said, in the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, many people consider them to be two prayers. And that's fine if a person prays nafal in the beginning, sort of about, you know, six in the morning or something like that, and then prays another nafal at nine, ten in the morning. It's not a problem. Praying nafal when it's permissible to pray is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, and there's a way to accept that there's possibly two nawafil at that time. But likewise, if somebody chose to just pray mid-morning prayer or forenoon prayer, 
then and only prayed you know one prayer and that would also be fine as well there's no one would be uh, you know because remember with the nawafil there's 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 this level of uh, uh, ambiguity and and uncertainty lack of clarity there we then have awabin and awabin is the ones we normally pray after maghrib but there's also a mention of them again between sunrise and noon so so it seems as though there is a prayer after the Maghrib Salah uh, of a, a four to six extra rakats, or it seems that it might be that same prayer that may not have got prayed at uh, forenoon and then ended up uh, after Maghrib. And then obviously we have tahajjud, and the normal, the normal practice for tahajjud is that one goes to sleep. Um, so that person who is quite confident that he will get up for his witr prayer then he shouldn't pray his witr either. He should join his witr after his tahajjud. And what he should do is pray his uh, isha, uh, pray his sunnats and nawafil and go to sleep. Then he, just before, obviously, subah sadiq takes place, because once subah sadiq has taken place, then isha time has gone. Fajr time has started. Then what that person should do is get up before that time. And when he gets up before that time, what he will do then is he will now uh, pray his uh, tahajjud prayer, pray his witr, and uh, then uh, either you know stay awake for whatever remains till Fajr start time. Uh, but if the Fajr is late because he's a Hanafi and it's going to be at you know four o'clock or something like that, three thirty, and it's now only uh, one o'clock or one thirty, there's no point staying awake for three four hours. So he can then go back to sleep or whatever. But generally speaking, people struggle with that. They struggle with the fact of uh, getting up. So you know because they're already getting up for Fajr. So the ulama advise that you pray your witr with your isha salah. If then you get up for tahajjud, alhamdulillah. If you don't get up for tahajjud, it's not a problem uh, because it's a nafal prayer and you prayed your witr, which is wajib anyway. So those are the kind of uh, questions that we get for nawafil. But on the point of nawafil, he says, as he takes a sip of the coffee, on the point of nawafil, we need to ensure that we have prayed our Qadha Fard first. And this is the point I raised as well uh, when uh, amongst my uh, colleagues, uh, fellow worshippers, uh, that I said was, look, what we need to do is we need to ensure that our Qadha Salahs are up to date. There's no point in praying Nawafil when we have debts owed. I said that would be like, you know, offering small gifts to somebody who you owe something to, and you're not acknowledging that debt. You know, how rude would you find it if I owed you £10,000 and every now and then I bought you a bag of chips? I'd be saying, look, brother, you know, don't buy the bag of chips. Keep your money, save your money, and instead pay my £10,000 back because, you know, I'd rather you spent your money in that way than spending your money in this way. This is, you know, not benefiting me whatsoever. In the same way, when we... Uh, uh, when Salah became compulsory upon us, as soon as we became Balir, our responsibility then was to pray Salah. If for whatever reason we didn't pray Salah, out of negligence, ignorance, whatever it might be, the reasons we give, then as soon as we realize the errors of our way, as soon as we realize that we've been wrong, then we make immediate Tawbah. We have to repent, because if we don't repent, then we are still not acknowledging our error. We are not acknowledging our mistake. The first thing we have to do is acknowledge our mistake, that, Ya Allah, we have made an error. Forgive us for this oversight. Forgive us for this ignorance. Forgive us for this transgression. We hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that uh, repentance because uh, he does describe himself as innahu tawwabur rahim. He is one who oftly accepts repentance and one who is ever merciful. So if he does accept that repentance, then we need to now make amends. We need to fix things. You know, if you smash my house up, you know, one thing is you apologize. The next thing is I, my expectation is now you pay for my house to be repaired. No point apologizing and then walking off. I'll say that's an empty, that's an empty apology because it was just words. It doesn't mean anything. So we then need to make good. So we need to then make up our qadha. So there's no point, you know, staying awake for ishraq or staying awake for charge or praying your awabin or getting up for tahajjud. When unfortunately, you know, we owe a thousand, two thousand, four thousand uh, qadha salahs. It's important that we fulfill our qadha salahs first. That's absolutely vital, absolutely important, without any shadow of doubt whatsoever. So that's key 
that we need to address those particular issues first when it comes to our salah. So I hope that question on the nawafil, nafil prayers, and also on what a priority should be has been answered in detail. Similarly, with nafal prayers, remember they are nafal, they are supererogatory, they are those that we do by choice. We should not look down upon people who don't do them. Um, if we should encourage people to do them, those who are under our responsibility, and obviously make sure that they, uh, you know, we can kind of advocate that. But we shouldn't make it a burdensome. You know, it might be okay for us uh, to pray our uh, nawafil because alhamdulillah, we have the time we have maybe a free morning or we don't work, so we've retired. So we can get up late at night. It's not a problem because we are always lying in the morning or we can have an afternoon siesta, an afternoon nap. So we can make up that lost sleep. But when it's, you know, dealing with people who've got busy lives, uh, maybe students at school, at college, or people who've got a busy uh, working life, then they may not be able to pray their nawafil. Okay, they may not get chance. Um, or they may only be able to pray, say, Awabin after Maghrib or something like that. Uh, they may not be able to get up for Tahajjud, things like that. So we shouldn't look down upon them. However, we have to be serious about praying our five daily prayers. Those are compulsory on every person. We cannot make any excuses for not praying them. We, do, we make, do we make excuses for anything else? We do everything else, don't we? We seem to fit everything else in apart from worshipping Allah when we cannot do anything else if Allah SWT did not give us capacity to do so. So we shouldn't take things for granted. We shouldn't take the absence of difficulty, musibat, uh, as a, as a, uh, for granted. You know, I always say to people that, look, if you think, if you only turn to Allah when something befalls you, then know that Allah SWT is going to make something befall you. You know, that's what's going to happen. So what you've got to do is not put yourself in that situation where you end up then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting harm upon you and when he puts harm upon you uh, then that makes life difficult for you and then you turn to Allah. Isn't it better that you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst you are still in a good state uh, and be uh, grateful to Allah? Why wait for some difficulty to befall you and then you turn to Allah? Those aren't wise steps. Anyway, I'm going to take some uh, questions that I've got through my uh, platform that I receive questions on. Uh, and so hopefully we can uh, tackle some there. Uh, but if you do have some questions, then do please call them in. Uh, the number to ring is uh, 01274 214299. Uh, but I'm uh, informed uh, that uh, we're just coming to sort of to the, to the end of the first session. So what I would do is uh, not call in now uh, because we will just be disappearing for a short break. So I advise you to uh, maybe call back in about five minutes time just when we uh, back on air, uh, when our second part comes on, please do call in. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get our call from our brother from Peterborough, but let's have some other people. We have a nice, enjoyable conversation. Uh, call in if you've got your question. Uh, the number to ring is 01274 214299. That's Bradford 214299. And, you know, there could be any sort of question that you're dealing with right now. Um, I will obviously deal with uh, some of these questions that we're going to get. I have a, a Darlifta on the uh, Telegram group, okay, where you can search for it, which is the Markazul Ifta Wal Qada. And I have a number of questions which are outstanding here, uh, in which I can then respond to them and hopefully uh, get those things uh, dealt with in good time, inshallah. So, um, please do, as I said, call in. Uh, maybe I could squeeze an answer in whilst we're waiting for the next minute or so. Let me let me just see if I can squeeze an answer in. Okay. Um, Assalamu alaikum. A friend brought me cereal bars and it has gelatin in it, uh, but they don't mention if it's animal or vegetable. Is there any website on American halal products? Okay. So unfortunately, uh, so let me reply back to that person. Uh, so wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Unfortunately, uh, I can't help there because uh, I do not know which particular website that this person would have to look at. So uh, I'm sorry to say I can't help. And, get, you know, that in itself is an answer. Sometimes we feel, um, you know, the common folk or ulama, that we have to give an answer all the time as if, as if though we are an encyclopedia. No person is expected to give an answer to everything because no person knows everything. It's impossible. 
Some of the time we have to say to people that get back to me, let me look this up. Sometimes we have to say to people that I don't know and it's going to take, up me, take me too much time to look for this. And sometimes we have an answer. This is all ilm. All three is our ilm. Because true knowledge is recognizing what you don't know. That is true knowledge because many of the times we kind of chit chat and spout our mouths out uh, when we don't really know what we're saying and, you know, and just to save face. Uh, and what we're doing is we get that person into bother and we definitely get ourselves into bother. So there's no need to answer a question uh, when we don't have uh, a, 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 a response. So there's a couple of more questions here which I will uh, read out and I will answer to, inshallah. And, uh, but for that, uh, as I said, we will take a short break. And once we return from the short break, inshallah, then uh, I will be able to deal with these. We have a ladies group and we have a gents group. Uh, so you can, as I said, search those particular questions and then inshallah ta'ala, uh, you will be able to uh, be, gain benefit from them as well. So, uh, without further ado, um, we'll see you inshallah ta'ala soon. So, a uh, couple of minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.